Hey team, what's the word? Word good? Good! So Sweet Jin asked me to paint a Japanese garden. So here's what I came up with. In an earlier episode, I mentioned that I have a workflow I try to follow for new stuff. Well, that's what I did. I thought of three things that a Japanese garden would have that I would want to see. Then I put them together digitally. 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 So now that I got the design, well, designed, grab your brush. It's painting time. Painting time. You don't have to paint at home, but you can paint here. Remember how I said, don't paint over your old paintings? And that I used to do just that? Well, here is one of them can buy that I did just that too. It didn't go well. So, but hey, waste not, what not. Let's paint over something we already painted over. It is what I do. I start with sap green and throw in color. Then I vary that color with a little cab yellow in titanium white. Here, I'm using my one inch brush and putting in the indication of trees. Well, they're leaves anyway. Honestly, the background doesn't need and shouldn't get a ton of fine detail, which <laughs> works for me. Turns out I'm all about conservation of movement and action. I'm varying the colors and strokes to get a bunch of variation. That's the plan. Ooh, pretty. Oh yeah, this is fun. And also a really bad idea. The colors are interesting and vibrant, but uh, they will take away from the big old cherry tree I want in the foreground. Besides, they just look like puddles of color and not bushes. Lame! Here's an idea. The paint is still super wet, so let's just blend it back and subdue the ever-loving out of them colors. There you go. That's the idea. Indicate that there is stuff back there without it being distracting. Low value. Not to me. I love it, but low color value. <laughs> I'm so silly. Now that's a background. Nice. I want it to be super misty back there, and the foreground is going to have a tree and a Tory gate in it. Or on it. In it. Uh, on it. <laughs> Whatever. It's going to have stuff in shadow on the left side, so having it be light back there will be a nice for some contrast. I really try hard to plan out a painting so I'm not using the same color, albeit a different value, on the same spot as the background. You know, makes it hard to see the details. Anyway, so Sweet Jen has a grandmama who lives with a bunch of other seniors in their own little village. Well, she likes Japanese-inspired things. She loved Japanese gardens as a girl and as a younger woman. So Jen asked me to paint a picture for her birthday so she could still have some familiarity in her new abode. Now, for me, Japanese gardens, in my mind, have a few things. I want three, because two isn't enough and four is too many. So I want three. One dost thou want? Two dost thou want? Three dost thou want? Dost thou need four? Nave, say I, three, and not one more. And in my skewed view on everything, a Tory gate, an arced bridge, and a cherry tree in full blossom is just what I need to make this stand out as a Japanese garden. More on the tree next episode. Oh, by the way, this is going to be a two-parter. Hope that's cool with everybody. There was a lot of footage and, well, I thought y'all would want to see the full painting getting done. Especially if you're following along. I watched Bob and Kevin, and they paint a full picture in 30 and 15 minutes respectively. Even on my best days with a super simple composition, I can't match their speed. And I don't really want to. Painting for me isn't about finishing quick. 
There are other activities where I finish super quick. Just ask Sweet Jen. But that's another story for another time. Mm. Painting for me is therapy because seriously, I, I'm half crazy. <laughs> I know because my sergeant had me checked. That's right, big sergeant. I is a little crazy. You were right the whole time. So painting is therapy for me. There is as much enjoyment in the middle of a painting, well, as long as that painting is going well, because if it isn't, I get real stressed. Especially when they start going astray and I can't do anything to stop it. Really, really crabby. Man, paintings be getting cut, son. But for me, I dig me a painting that is getting done right. The whole process is therapeutic, that being said. Although, if it goes not well, I goes not well. So I enjoy waking up in the morning with the pain halfway through that is starting to come together. And I like pain in short bursts. Maybe two or three sessions of 45 minutes, half an hour, I don't know. Whatever I feel like, I don't want to get stressed out. This is supposed to be, like I said, therapeutic. And if I'm stressing myself out, what good is that? No good. We move on. Anyway, what would normally take a day, accumulatively, ends up taking several, and, that, and that's fine by me. What about y'all? Do you prefer to knock it out and go on to the next one? Or do you prefer to take your time and really dig the process? And don't get me wrong, I'm still half-soldier, and I am very, very results-oriented and focused. And I need me a pretty, pretty painting, after all, you know? And I would be unhappy if the end result sucked. And boy... Let me tell you, they can at times. Woo wee. Not so much now, but still a little bit now. But I've gotten much better. <laughs> and you know, I've come to accept things and be okay with things. Those aren't ugly clouds and lame mountains. Those are those are pretty clouds and bold, majestic mountains. Well, it's a nice mountain anyway. I should mention that I usually have more than one project going at the same time. So I work a little on this. Work a little on that. I write a little bit. Go back. Work either a little more. Whatever I'm feeling excited about. Although, towards the end, though, I, I tend to focus and get all wrapped up on one to the neglect of the other. I, I just get so excited when a pain starts to come together. Woo-wee! I dig it. So one of the cool things about being an artist, and a painter in particular, also a former policeman and soldier, is uh, I'm pretty observant. As one of the ways to put that into practice is observing things from my paintings and then asking why. For instance, when thinking about what to put in this painting, I knew I wanted those flat uh, arch thingies. You know, they're painted red. Oh, dang. What are they called? I said to myself. And I had to go find out. At the very least, so I would know what to search for for reference photos because I am not going to Japan. So as I researched, I found that they are called Tori Gates. And they're pretty cool. They're a literal gate, a Shinto gate, that marks a precipice between the profane and the sacred. That's pretty cool. It also marks the difference between a Buddhist temple and a Shinto shrine on, say, a map. Knowing what the function of the gate is helped to build a design for the painting. Art definitely imitates life. Anyway, it is kind of cool to be immersed in, in, find, in the culture of another far-off land and then creating something with the respect that knowledge engenders. It isn't just a cool, quirky aspect of Japanese architecture. It's a very real expression of their most cherished ancient beliefs. In fact, the oldest Tori gate known was mentioned in a Japanese chronicle dating back to 922. The year 922, guys. That's crazy. That's over a thousand years of tradition and meaning. So it made me want to respect that, and as a result, I think I got a more authentic composition. At least a more meaningful one. For me. And Jin, because I told her. <laughs> and now you. So famous and identifying is the Tori Gate that the Marine Corps Security Forces stationed in Japan have it as their symbol. As does the unit of the 101st Airborne Division, although it's not official. Good stuff, huh? Have you guys found cool and interesting things out from painting and art? comment on something you found out as a consequence of your artistic journey. Oh man, like the, the dimensions of the body in the golden mean. Bah. But those are different shows.
So now we are going to work on the bridge. I've always liked visiting Japanese gardens and loved climbing up the bridge and looking out upon the whole garden. And, well, this is no accident. The Japanese traditionally are all about balance and communion with nature. And their gardens are no exception. They're a Japanese form of feng shui, which is actually a Chinese word. Never mind. The point being is that the Japanese are very symbolic and everything means something. Which brings us to the bridge. Much like the Tori Gate, the Red, Bri the red Bridge, or Guzai? Guzai? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I think Guzai, G-U-Z-E-I, are stationed at crossroads that bridge the spirit world with the physical. As one crosses the bridge, they are crossing from the profane and confused worldliness into a state of purity and wisdom. Or, so the thought goes. The water they cross uh, being a symbol of cleanliness and renewal, and very tranquil. All part of what the garden is supposed to do. Relax and make yourself feel at one. Uh, and for tea. Nice. Mm-mm, love that tea. Mm. It's awesome and brings a new appreciation for Japanese gardens in the Japanese culture. It's fun knowing why these things that I have enjoyed since a kid have meaning and they're not just pretty things that look good together. The aesthetic was driven by meaning, which can be a foreign concept in America, but it isn't lost on all of us, and it is the icing of awesomeness for my painting to incorporate these very important features into my work. In fact, it rather inspired me, and the placement of the features will add up to what they mean, which will make more sense in the next video when I finish up the full composition. Oh, and by the way, the color is purposeful as well. It represents the sacred, which is also why the Tori Gate is red. Every little detail means something, which is quintessential Japanese culture, highly stylized with exacting attention to detail. Try going to a traditional tea ceremony. Every hand gesture and movement, every word are regimented and purposeful, which is cool, if not super intense, and honestly a little much for me. I'm pretty informal, but hey, it is part of what makes Japan unique and special and worth celebrating, which is what this painting is kind of all about as well as a birthday present for good old Gigi. What do you think so far? Let me know in the comments. By the by, do y'all prefer longer videos that show the full painting? Or do you like me trying to keep it pithy and bring up the videos into 12 to 15 minute blocks of awesome? I'm flexible. Let me know. Look for part two real soon and check back every Thursday for new paintings. If you like what you saw, please subscribe <laughs> and hit the bell so you'll stay up to date on all the awesomeness. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. Be excellent to each other.